Okay, welcome back. <coughs> today we're going to start a new lesson. And today's lesson is going to be on vectors. This is a new unit. And specifically, <coughs> today we're going to learn about how to add vectors. But before we get into adding vectors, I want to uh, discuss quickly the definition of vectors. Okay, so a vector or vectors have both magnitude and direction. Um, scalars, on the other hand, only have magnitude. Okay, so uh, what would be examples of this? So an example uh, of a vector would be, for example, for example, uh, velocity, or let's say even you know acceleration. Uh, for a scalar example, it would be something like mass or even temperature. Um, yeah. Uh, also, you know, like let's say for example, even time is a scalar. Um, now, how do we add vectors? So. First of all, we have to define how do we represent a vector pictorially. So we represent vectors with an arrow. And this is considered the tail of the arrow. And this is considered the head of the arrow. That arrowhead points in the direction which the vector is acting or is, is directed. So uh, how do we add vectors that are parallel? So let's do that next. Adding parallel vectors. So the way we would do this is, it's very simple. It's basically just arithme arithmetic addition. If we have a vector that is 30 plus a vector that is 40, we end up with a vector that is 50. Or sorry, what did I just say? <laughs> 70. 30 plus 40 is 70. Um, on the other hand, if we had a vector that was 30 plus another vector, but this time now it's 40 in the opposite direction, now you can see that this vector would now be 10 in the left direction. Notice where my head is and the tail is. Okay? So this is really forward. These vectors are parallel to each other. And it's simply just like adding and subtracting numbers. This is like saying 30 plus 40 is 70. This is like saying 30 plus negative 40 is 10, uh, in the ne negative 10. So it would be to the left. Now, on the other hand, what if we add vectors uh, perpendicularly or orthogonally? 
Another word for orthogonal is, you could say, perpendicular. <clears throat> there is one thing I forgot to write down here, and I'll do this in a different color. And that is that this vector here is called the resultant vector. It is the, it's the sum of the other two, okay? So these, these guys here, the 70 and the 10, are called the resultant. Now, when we add vectors perpendicularly, we would go, let's say, for example, we have a, an, let's say, a 30 plus a 40. Now, the 40 is um, not horizontal, but it's perpendicular to the original one. This is not, they're not going to add arithmetically. Instead, we're going to add them head to tail. And, and the resultant in this case starts from the tail and goes to the head of the last vector. So let's write down the couple of rules that we just used to create this right angle triangle. Rule number one, and I'll, I'll do this in red, add vectors head to tail. Notice that there is the head of the first vector and there is the tail of the second vector. Okay. The next rule that we're going to write down, rule number two, is that the resultant and the resultant is here. The resultant vector is from tail to the head of the last. So, so from tail so I should say first tail to last head of component vectors. In other words, the first vector here, so this is kind of like, maybe put brackets around it. So from the first tail to the last head. Now in this case, we're only adding two vectors, but we could be adding more than two. There are situations where that can occur as well. Now, having said this, there is more than one way to add vectors and still get the correct answer. So let's, uh, let's take a look at those now, and I'll switch back to black. Um, just like, just like adding numbers, if I go 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, I can also say 4 plus 3 equals 7. Now what this means is that addition is commutative. This is a, that's a, that's a word. Oops, what's going on here? Whoa. Okay, had a bit of a technical glitch. So addition is commutative. Now, also multiplication is also commutative, but subtraction and division is not. In other words, three minus four does not equal four minus three, and three divided by four is not equal to four divided by three. 
But for multiplication, 3 times 4 does indeed equal 4 times 3. So why is this important? Well, it's that adding vectors is also commutative. Now, how can we show that? Well, in this case, I've added 30 plus 40. What if I was to do the 40 plus 30? In other words, what if I did the 40 first and I went plus the, th the 30 next? I know they're not to proper length. The 40 should be longer. But essentially, if I did that, I would get here's my 40. And then now if I add head to tail, here is my 30. And then if I write, if I draw the resultant, it goes, there's my resultant. Um, notice that this resultant is the same direction and magnitude as this one. And how do we calculate this result? Well, the way we do this is with a math uh, concept called Pythagoras. So Pythagoras says that the resultant, let's say, is C equals A squared plus B squared. Therefore, the resultant C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared, where this is, for example, C. This is this could be A and this could be B. Therefore, it's equal to the square root of 30 squared plus 40 squared. Now, if you do this, you will indeed get 50. And I just know this because a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So my resultant here is or would be 50. That means this resultant is also 50 because it doesn't matter which order you do the calculation, 40 squared plus 30 squared is still the same answer. Now, this gives me the this gives me the magnitude. However, before I continue to get the direction, because if you remember from the beginning of the lesson, if I go back up, it says vectors have both magnitude and direction. We we've only gotten the magnitude portion so far. Um, let's go ahead and calculate the direction. So the direction here it let's put it here and let's say let's denote this as angle theta. So let's start with this top one and um, I could just simply kind of move this over a little bit and we'll give us some space here to calculate theta. Um, I'm going to be kind of doing a little bit of a, a math lesson at this point. Let's do a little bit of mathematical review. So let's go back to basic geometry, or, or I should say trigonometry. And we know this is 50, we know this is 30, and we know this is 40. We're trying to calculate this angle theta. So most math teachers will teach this as so ka toa, where this mnemonic corresponds to sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, what this corresponds to here is it means that sine theta is equal to 
uh, 40, which is the opposite to theta, divided by 50. Cosine theta is equal to 30 divided by 50. And tan theta is equal to 40 divided by 30. So these numbers correspond to the adjacent n because this is so to theta this is this is the hypotenuse this is the opposite and this is the adjacent okay so hopefully that makes sense now but in addition um, you need to know that to get theta so for example, I know this 50 is calculated, so let's use tan because 40 and 30 were given to us. So now let's say, let's use this last one here and let's say, what does theta equal? Well, it's equal to the inverse tangent of 40 divided by 30. And so we can get our calculator now and calculate this. The answer here is that theta is equal to 53.1 degrees. However, <clears throat> um, I want to also um, go back here and say, well, what if we had, instead of adding 30 and then 40, what if we, since, since vector addition is commutative, what if we had added 40 first and then the 30? Now, what would this angle be? Well, this is theta as well, but it's a different theta. Now, you might say, well, how do we express the answer? So, because either way, since both are correct, then shouldn't there be two answers, both with the same magnitude but with different directions? The answer is really that the direction is only one direction. However, the direction can be expressed in two different ways. Let's go ahead and calculate that. So in this case, obviously, um, theta here is going to equal inverse tangent of opposite 30 over 40. Now, if we do that, we're going to get 36.9. Which, by the way, makes total sense because 36.9 is the complement of 53.1. In other words, uh, complementary angles complementary angles, let's say you have two angles, they add up to 90. That's the definition of complementary angles. And in this case, 36.9 plus 53.1 does indeed equal 90. Um, essentially, all we found here is that, you know, since this angle here is uh, theta, then this angle, oops, then this angle is the complement of this one because they all add up to 180, and this is 90. So they're for this one and this one. The angles at the two uh, legs are complementary. So it makes sense that this is 36.1 and this is 53.1. However, um, how do we express our answer? So let's write it down. Here, I'll express my answer for this one. I'll say the resultant is equal to 50. Now, usually I would use units here. So I'm going to pretend <coughs> that these are velocities. I don't like to write an answer without units because then it doesn't 
it's not really physics, it's just math. So then I'll write the at symbol. And you can either, you can use the at symbol or you can use at, uh, as in the word at, but it doesn't matter. I like the at symbol. And then I'll say 36.9 degrees. And now I'll denote the angle by going like this. You see, that little symbol there says that if I have to, I go down from the vertical and it's to the right up. And there's my little angle uh, denotation there. So I have my magnitude and my angle and the angle uh, direction. Whereas, if I was to go back to the my first example, right? Uh, I think that was here, then that was 53.1. I can write down the answer to this one here. I'll put it here. I'll say R equals 50. Uh, let me move this up so you can see both at the same time. 50 meters per second at, and now I'll write uh, 53.1 degrees and now I'll write the, the the symbol for its direction by going like this and you see now these two answers this one and this one are in fact the same answer. So either way you represent these, it's they're both correct. Okay? Notice the magnitude is correct, but there's two different ways of expressing the direction. But understand that both directions are the same direction. Now, having said this, there is another convention of expressing uh direction and that is the compass direction so let me draw them again I'll draw both of them again um, so here we have 30 and 40 and then here we have 40 and 30. And in both cases, my resultant, you notice both resultants are pointing in the same direction with the same magnitude. However, I'll put down both, so this one was uh, 53.1 and this one was 36.9 now in order to understand compass direction we need to write down our compass uh, symbol or our compass uh, directions and that's north east south west an easy, oh, you might not be able to actually see that because of, um, here, let me try that again because my image is in the way. Let me do it here. Okay, so north, east, south, west. Now, there's an easy way to memorize this. You can say, never eat stinky worms. That's uh, an easy uh, mnemonic to memorize. It's, 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 it's always clockwise too, right? Never eat stinky worms. Any, in any case, whatever way you want to memorize that, it's, it's up to you. However, let me write down this one again as we had done before. So I'll say R equals 50. I want units and I'll say at 53.1 degrees. And remember how I wrote this before, I did it like this. 
I can also write this like this. R equals 50 meters per second at 53.1 degrees. And now I'll use my compass and I'll say, notice that the, the vector, if I was to draw it in here, would be like this, and this is my angle. So therefore, I would say it is 53.1 degrees north of east. So either of these two is correct. Now, how would I write this again over here? I could say R equals 50 the resultant meters per second at 36.9 degrees. And now I can write the symbol, draw the symbol like that. And that would be correct because I, it's clear what direction my 36.9 is. But I can also write it with the compass direction like this. Thirty-six point nine degrees, and now I can say east of north. So the way the way this would work is, you think, okay, it's it's a little bit unintuitive, but I'll explain it. So in this case, the angle, right? If I use a different color here, the thirty-six is here. So so this ang this thirty-six. Well, let's let's write it here. And this one's 53.1. So notice this east of north is you start from north, you go towards the east. How much? 36.9. That's this one. Okay? Whereas the 53.1, you start at east and you go towards the north. So it is north of east. Okay? And that's this one. So. Uh, I don't know if I like those arrows there. I'll take them out because they're not part of the answer. But essentially, my purpose in doing this is to show you that if you draw, if you are asked to represent the answer in a compass direction, you would do one of either north of east or east of north, and then it, you can also express your answer if without. This is not compass direction. Th th these ones are the compass directions. Okay. Uh, this one was what I taught before, and the second one is the compass direction uh, method. But essentially, all four of these answers are still correct. They're the same vector. Another way to look at this is, you know, the, the 36.9 east of north. So that's north going up, and then you'd go 36.9 east of north, like that. Okay, and the other alternative is if you start from east and you go 53.1 north of east. So that is for the, uh, the top solution. Just to be clear, the vector here, this point, is at the center of the compass. Okay, so here are some common mistakes that students make uh, when they're adding vectors. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, okay, here's my 30 and here is my 40. And then they'll say, oh, okay, now that I've got the two vectors, let me write in the, uh, or draw in the resultant. Now the reason why this is wrong is because you'll notice that the vectors are tail to tail. And this is wrong. Okay? Also notice the direction. If it's tail to tail, how do you know which way the resultant goes? For example, I could have drawn this again tail to tail. And I could have gone like this with the 40 and the 30. Sorry, I'm not drawing these to scale, but it doesn't really matter. But I can also do that. Now it's in the opposite direction. 
and this is still tail to tail, and it's wrong. Um, the other thing that students can do is they can go, they can do it correctly and they can say um, like this, they could go, oops, let me try that again. They can go head to tail, this is head to tail. So that's correct, but now look what they'll do for the resultant. They'll put the resultant resultant, they'll go um, head to tail. And that's wrong. Okay? The resultant is supposed to be from the t first tail to the last head. So this is this is 180 degrees wrong direction. Now I want to show you the oops, let me <coughs> change the color here again. I want to show you the correct methods of adding them. Okay? So here is one correct method. So the ones on the left are wrong and the ones on the right are correct. So that's one correct method. Uh, it is head to tail. Actually, let me go, oops. Okay, so head to tail. That's right. And the resultant is from the first tail to the last head. Check mark. Um, but the other way of doing this is would be this way. 40 and then 30 and now if we did the resultant notice that these two vectors are not only the same magnitude this is correct as well so this is exactly the same I don't need to repeat that but these two here are both correct they result in the correct magnitude and the correct direction so the magnitude is correct and the direction is correct. Whereas over here, all three of these guys, the magnitude is correct. Surprise, you know, like, listen, you're still gonna get the correct magnitude. By the way, this was a 40. Okay, you're still gonna get the correct magnitude because Pythagoras is still going to give you 50. But the direction is always going to be wrong on all three of these. Okay? So this is something to keep in mind. Um, and I think this really illustrates all the possible correct ways to do it and all the possible ways to the, the wrong ways to add vectors. Okay? And this, by the way, is specifically for adding vectors exclusively. Let's put that down at the top here. This is adding vectors. Okay? Um, one other quick math kind of a uh, note I'll give you is so you've learned now that if you have the legs of a uh, triangle 
you can calculate the resultant and you can calculate the angle. However, what if you are given the resultant and you are given the angle? Then, how do you calculate the, the legs? Well, in this case, let's say for example this is 6 and this is 30 degrees then this side would be 6 cosine 30 and this side would be 6 sine 30 and this is just you can get this from Sokotoa but essentially it's just nice to memorize that the opposite side is the hypotenuse times the angle the op times uh, sine sine of the angle this is this is the opposite side to the angle so therefore it's sine 30 sine of the angle times the hypotenuse this is the adjacent side so it's cosine the angle times the hypotenuse it's it's really nice if you memorize that instead of having to write down Sokotoa every time and write down the equations. That's very handy. Uh, in addition, another really handy thing, and this is not really part of physics itself, it's more like a math lesson. There are certain angles that I like to just know offhand. They are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. So for these guys, um, I like to know the sine and the cosine of these angles. So sine of a 0 is 0. Sine of 90 is the opposite is 1. Cosine of 90 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. And the way you can think of this, by the way, to kind of understand this, is if you write a unit circle, so this circle has a radius of 1 and sine is the vertical distance and cosine is the horizontal distance so you know if you drew an angle like this and there's theta then you would break that up I kinda did it too small but uh, if I draw it larger here then here are your two legs. So if this, this hypotenuse would be the radius, which is 1, then whatever this angle is, it's 1 times cosine theta, where this is theta, and this is sine theta. You see? Because the hypotenuse being 1, 1 times sine theta is still sine theta and 1 times cosine theta is still cosine theta. So you'll notice that if theta was 90 degrees it's the vector would be pointing straight up and the the vertical component would be a hundred percent which is 1 the horizontal component would be 0 whereas if the angle was 0 this is theta, then sine is 0 and cosine is 1. Now, in terms of the other angles, I just memorized sine 30 is 1 half, okay? Therefore, I know that the opposite of that is the complementary angle is root 3 over 2. And I, I now know that since 60 is the complement of 30, the answers are flipped, so this becomes root 3 over 2, and this becomes 1 half. That's 1 over 2. And now, for 45, sine and cosine, is they're equal because the complement of 45 is 45. So this is 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2. And you can actually figure that out, by the way, the 1 over root 2 part. Uh, it, there's an easy derivation for that. If you get a 
right angle triangle where this is 45 and this is 45 and this is 90 and this is 1. Now you know that the two legs must be equal. So if you said c squared and then, or I shouldn't say c squared. Let's say this is c and this is a and this is b. Now you can say a equals b because it's a e the two legs are equal in this case and so a equals b. So you can just say x equals a equals b. So the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared becomes c squared. And by the way, c is 1 in this case, right? So I can just say this is just a 1, and 1 squared is still 1. And then instead of writing a here, I'll write x squared plus x squared because both a and b are both x. They're equal. And so notice now this becomes 1 equals x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Divides both sides by 2, and you get 1 over 2 equals x squared. And now you get 1 over root 2 equals x. Because you take the square root of both sides, square root of 1 is 1. And so now we know that the length of this side, of both sides, is 1 over root 2. Now if you did that, now you know what the cosine is. It's 1 over root 2. There it is. And you know what the vertical side is. It's also 1 over root 2. So this, this um, table of sine cosine angle uh, answers is something that math students can usually put to memory. And it's a, it becomes very handy because they're very common angles. So that's the end of uh, adding vectors with a little bit of extra math thrown in. See you.